Germany had a large array of unique small arms, including the first effective assault rifle, but one of their most unique weapons was extremely simple, cheap, and effective, and it has become an icon in gaming and in cinema. The Panzerfaust was a recoilless, single-use, preloaded tube with a high-explosive anti-tank warhead. Its simplicity to manufacture and use made it an ideal weapon at the end of the war for Germany, which began arming civilians and children alike with a weapon that required little training. The weapon began production in 1942, and 6.7 million variants would be produced. The one thing the Panzerfaust did require was some guts. Guts to get close enough to an Allied tank to use it. The Panzerfaust needed to be used within an average range of 30 meters, depending on the variant. Compared to the Panzer Schreck anti-tank weapon, that had a range of almost 150 meters, though with highly variable success. Further adding to the difficulty of using the weapon, occasionally on a successful hit, many close-range users of the Panzerfaust risk fragmentation injury from the very tanks they knocked out. The main benefit of the Panzerfaust was that if it was used correctly, and within range, it could penetrate virtually any Allied tank. The Panzerfaust also had the benefit of giving off less toxic smoke than the Panzer Schreck. making the weapon mildly more usable in confined spaces, but only if there was room for the deadly backblast of three meters. The movie Fury demonstrates the typical use of a Panzerfaust, with a youth knocking out a Sherman, passing alongside concealment. The Panzerfaust here is demonstrating its beyond armor effect, which its unique wide and hollow warhead provided. Panzerfaust often create not only larger holes in tanks, but more spalling, a type of fragmentation that can become superheated along with the air and ignite both ammunition and fuel inside the tank and was deadly to the crew. Though it should be noted that a spalling effect is not typical of a modern hollow heat round, which is designed to penetrate, not to create spalling. The Panzerfaust's secondary spalling effect was an added latent function of the crew charge being so close to the point of contact. This leads us to the highly unlikely end scene in Fury, which overall is a decent tank movie but certainly has a few mistakes. Our protagonist Sherman is hit with a Panzerfaust at close range, with only one crewman injured, which may be possible with older bazooka-fired, pointed-nose rockets, but certainly not possible from a Panzerfaust fully penetrating the hull, which would result in shockwave and spalling injuries for the entire crew in a best-case scenario. In the final months of the war, Allied tank casualty ratios grew from Panzerfaust and Panzerschreck personal weapons, due to dwindling anti-tank guns and German armor, which was one of several reasons logs and sandbags were added to tanks, adding some minor protection against these anti-tank weapons. Though this was often more for peace of mind over statistically proven effectiveness. Panzerfaust were also sold to Finland from Germany, who desperately needed anti-tank weapons to hold off heavy Soviet armor. They were effective in Finland's forests, where soldiers could ambush tanks along wooded roadways. Unfortunately, some of the training was rushed with the desperate need to put the weapon into immediate service. Notably, there are examples of nearly every Allied army and partisan group capturing this prolific weapon and using them against the German army, sometimes even preferring them over their own anti-tank weapons. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on the Panzerfaust. If you want a complete list of the movie clips used, please check the video description. If you want to support the channel, please like the video, subscribe, or expand on the subject in the comment section below.